in the sight of the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. God has blessed us with another day to be here to worship him. I have uh, one visitor's card. We have the Smith family from Zanesville, Ohio, a member of the Novell Park Church of Christ. Their daughter was here on yesterday. She was singing in a special event on yesterday, so we want to congratulate her for that. Okay. Have a few announcements. The 2021 individual contribution statements are available and can be picked up in room 108 immediately after morning worship. And you can get those for your tax purposes. Also, for those that do not have a card, a member's card number for your offering envelope, you can get those in 108 also. Our food giveaway will be Tuesday, February the 15th from 10 o'clock to noon. Continued prayers for health for Cherie Thomas, her uh, Fiance Anthony is still in the hospital. Pray for Sister Patrick's husband, who is also admitted to the hospital. Prayer for Sister McLean, who has also been admitted to the hospitals this morning. Also continued prayer for Sister Pamela Ely. She will have surgery on Monday. Continued prayer for Brother James Bentley, his nephew Keith, who's also experiencing health conditions. Continued prayer for Kaylin Brewster. Continued prayer for all of those who have requested prayer for health and those with medical procedures coming. Continued prayer for those who have lost family members throughout last year and this year. Remember to pray for our sick and shed in and those who are administering health to them. And continue prayer for the leadership here at university. Those are all the announcements that I have. I'm Brother Barnes, I will be calling you to worship. Brother Greg Shields will be our song leader. Brother Bruce Johnson, Meditation and Scripture, Brother Amos Hicks for prayer, Brother Terrence McLean will offer our sermon for this morning, Brother Elijah, Elijah Tolar, communion, Brother Justin Shields for our benediction, and our response facilitator will be Brother Donald Nelson. Once again, I'm Brother Frank Barnes, and you have been called to worship. Let us go to God in prayer. To our Father, our God in heaven, we thank you for this day that you have given us to come and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we are thankful for our guests, the Smith family. We pray, Father, that you will give them traveling grace back home. We continue to pray for all of those who have requested prayer this morning that you will continue to watch over them and those who are administering to them. And Father, we pray what we do and what we say will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. This is our prayer. In the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning. <clears throat> Let's um, start off with my hope is built on uh, on nothing less, nothing less. 
My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fell with lovely faith, I rest on his unchanging grave. If oath is covered, stormy gale, my anchor hold within the veil. On Christ the Son, little rock, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered, his blood support me in the overwhelming flood. When all around my soul gives way he then is all my I hope and stay on oh, Christ the solid rock all other ground is sinking sand all of ground is sinking sand when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless to stand before the throne of oh, Christ the Son, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Let's try um, when we all get to heaven. What we're going to do here, we're going to sing the um, sing all the verses first. Then we're going to come back and sing the chorus, maybe maybe, maybe twice. But we're going to sing the verses and then the chorus, all, all four verses. All right. <clears throat> sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace uh, in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place. Oh, while we walk the pilgrim path wake loud will over spread the sky but when traveling days are over not the shadow not the sun let us then be true and faithful trusting serving every day I just one glimpse of him in glory will the tools of life repay onward to the peers before us in his beauty will behold assume the pearly 
glory gates will open we shall tread the streets of gold well, when we all get to heaven oh, what a day of rejoicing that'll be oh, when we We'll see and shout the victory. Well, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that'll be. Well, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Church, say amen. 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 I'm before you this morning with the meditation of scripture. The meditation will be taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 27 through 32. Mm-hmm. And it can also be found on the, on the screen above me. Neither give place to the devil. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, mm-hmm. but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Amen. 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 This morning's scripture reading will be taken from the book of Acts, chapter 30, chapter 2. Verse 37 through 40. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 40. And it reads, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? <laughs> Go here, Bruce. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. May the Lord add a blessing to the, hope, to the readers, the hearers and the doers of his holy and divine word. Now prepare your hearts that we might be led in prayer by Brother Amos Hicks. It tempted and tried we of me to wonder why it should be there all the day long. While there are others living about us, nevermore let it stay, though in the wrong of Father along will know all about it. A father along will understand why. A cheer of my brother will live. 
living the sun and shine or oh, we'll understand in this all by oh father along we'll know all about it father along we'll understand why a cheer of my brother go ahead and live in the sunshine I will understand all of this all by and by let us pray our Lord our God our Father we come before you this morning giving thanks we thank you Lord because you have woken us up once again you have protected us we're living in a troubled world father we have sin all around us we have the pandemic personal and political strife abound but we're still your people and you still protect us you walk with us every day Lord you talk with us you send your spirit to guide us and we are thankful father you welcome us back into your household each and every day although we continue to live the way we do Father, we are thankful for that. Father, we ask that you would never walk away from us and send your spirit to keep us from walking away from you. Father, you have told us what we have to do. You have given us the owner's manual to teach us what we must do and must not do. And you have told us that the consequences of our sinful life that the price of sin is death. But Father, we are thankful that you have sent your son to pay the debt that we owe and could never repay. We're thankful, Father, that your spirit each day goes out with us and tells us to turn away from sin, to not go to places that we choose to go or hang out with the people that we choose to be around. Father, give us the strength, give us the willpower, give us the love of you and the spirit to do the things that we must do and not do the things that we do. Hmm. Because we must remember that each and every time we commit sin, that we reconvict Christ. Father, as we go about our lives, we ask that you would continue to protect us, protect our leadership, mm -hmm. protect our politicians, mm. that they can make right choices. These and all things we ask in Christ's precious name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. I love to pray to him. I love to praise him. And I love to pray it's him. Well, I love to praise him. I love to pray it's him. I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. Well, he's my rock. My rock, my rock, my sword and shield. Oh, he's the way. He's the way here for the middle of the way. I know he'll never. He'll never. He'll never. Oh, he's 
just a jewel, a jewel that I have found. Every now and then, song leaders like to stop, get a pulse for the for, for the congregation. Somebody need to hear you on 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 Euclid Avenue say you love to praise God because if you just well somebody needs to hear you saying you love to or love to praise God. Come on, let, let's start this thing over with. Let's get uh, let, let, let's get into it. All right. I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him. He said, Well, I love to praise Him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise his name. Oh, oh, oh I, I love to praise his holy oh, name. Oh, oh, Where is my rock? His my rock. My rock, my, my rock, rock, my sword and shield. Oh, he's a will. Oh, the will in the middle. He'll never, never let me. Oh, he's just a joy, a joy that I have found. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. We oh, I love the praise him. I love to praise him, to praise him. We oh, I love the praise him. We're singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. Well, is my rock, is my rock, my rock, my sword and shield. He's the wind. Hell in the middle of the way, oh, you know he'll never, he'll never, never let me die. Oh, he's just a joke, a joke that I have found. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, well, I love the praise. Singing hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. We oh, I love the praises. Oh, we're singing hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, we oh, I love the praises. Oh, oh, I love to praise His holy name. Well, He's my rock. My rock, my rock, my sword and shell. He's a well, the well in the middle of the well. I love you never. My God will never let me down. He's just a joy, a joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I love to praise his name, I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah, I love to praise him, I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah, I love to praise him, oh, I love to praise him. Oh, to praise, oh, 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 I love to praise Him, holy name. Amen. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a will in the middle of will. I really love the words that said, I know He'll never, He'll never let me down. He's just a jewel that I have found. Certainly we're thankful to God Almighty for blessing all of us with the opportunity to come together and to worship him in spirit and in truth. We thank 
all of our brethren, Brother Frank Barnes, one of our elders, for ushering Amen. us into the presence of God Almighty. Uh, we are thankful to Brother Greg, Greg Shields, another one of our elders, who also happens to lead us in praises to God. And I'm so thankful for the way he leads us in praise. Your preacher needed it this morning. Uh, Sister McLean is in the hospital again. I was at the hospital till 3 o'clock this morning. So don't let that throw you off. That doesn't mean that you're going to get a Brill Cream sermon. You know what a Brill Cream sermon is, a little dab of do you. But we believe that God is still in control and God is still a good God. Thank you, Brother Greg, for leading us in praises to him. Thank all of you for joining us in praising God and declaring what he's worth in song. Brother Bruce Johnson, thank you for reading the meditation and the scripture. Brother Hicks for leading us to the throne of grace in prayer. Uh, we look forward to Brother T Toler and leading us in the Lord's Supper as we remember the death and suffering of Jesus till he comes again, Brother Barnes coming back, and we get the opportunity, the privilege of giving as God has prospered us. He's certainly giving us more than we deserve. And then Brother Justin Shields, uh, one of the fine young men here at the congregation and the son of Brother Greg, Sister Latrice, uh, is going to give us the benediction, but we are always mindful that though we dismiss ourselves from this place, we never dismiss ourselves from the presence of God Almighty. Thank all of you who are, are present. We're thankful for the Smith family who has joined us. God bless you. Thank you so very much for loving God enough to want to assemble with the saints here. Uh, thankful to all of you who are watching live on Facebook. Especially if you're not a member of the Church of Christ, we are thankful that you have chosen by personal decision to share with us as we worship God in spirit and in truth. Those who are on the teleconference call, thank you for being here. And others who will be watching on Facebook later and on YouTube, especially if you've not yet obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, we want you to know that you are welcome that we are a people who love the Lord and we endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of, of peace. We believe there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who's above all and through all and in us all. So with that being said, I want you to turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. Verses 37 through 40. Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through, through 40. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it yet, say wait. Verse 37 reads, Now when they heard this. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Mm -hmm. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves. From this untoward generation. The word untoward means wicked. Save yourselves from this wicked generation. Verse 37 says, now when they heard this. Now when they heard this. 
Now when they heard this, our subject this morning is entitled, This, That, and the Other. This, that, and the other. Would you pray with me? Gracious and eternal Father who art in heaven, you are holy, you are righteous, and you are just. It is in you that we move and live and have our very being, and we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. You stopped by and woke us this morning. We got up in our right minds and with the activity of our limbs. And we realized that it's not because we are better than others who lay down last night who didn't get up this morning. In fact, Father, since we have awakened on this morning and gotten up, there are others who got up when we did, but they didn't make it to this moment. And we have not been spared because we are better than they, but because of your grace and your mercy. And so for this, we say thank you. Father, our prayer is that all that we have done up to this point has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. It's only our desire to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, I pray that as I stand here in this pulpit, humbled that you give me an opportunity to proclaim your word. Father, my prayer is that you will be glorified, Jesus will be lifted up, that all might be drawn to him. That your children will be strengthened and built up in the most holy and precious faith. And those who are not yet Christians, that the Holy Spirit will take your word and convict them of the need of the salvation that's in Christ and in him alone. They will respond in humble obedience to the gospel of Christ before it's everlasting and eternally too late. And that those who may have strayed away, fallen away, or are walking a, a guilty distance from you, that their hearts also might be pricked and they might be restored in their walk with you. Thank you for Jesus, your son. He died on the cross for our sins. You raised him for our justification. He's on your right hand, making intercession for us, even at this very moment. One day he's coming back again. Coming back for his church. Coming back for his bride. Coming back for his body. Our desire is to be a part of that body. To be in the church. To be a part of the bride so that we can spend eternity with you. Be with all of our sick and, and shut in. Be with Gregory Patrick, the husband of our beloved sister, Eloise Patrick. Bless those who are ministering to his physical needs. Father, be with Sister Regina Williams and her son. They are in need of special prayer. Be with Sister Pam Ely as she recovers from surgery. Be with my beloved wife, Linda. Watch over her, protect her, and keep her safe. And may those who are ministering to her, even at this moment in the hospital, bring to their memory what they've studied. Use them as instruments in your hand to restore her to excellent health and strength. Be with those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. And help me, Father, to give a word to everyone who stands in need of it today that will give them strength and give them courage to face life knowing that you have promised never to leave your children nor to forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. This, that, and, and the other. The Holy Spirit has Luke right in Acts chapter 2. Now when they heard, heard this. People are hearing a whole lot of stuff today, but it's not the this they ought to be hearing. 
People are being drawn away by the philosophies of men and the opinions of men and man-made doctrines and all of these kinds of things, but there is a this that needs to be heard. When the Holy Spirit says when they heard this, it really goes back to Acts chapter 2 and beginning at about verse number 22 when the Bible says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou would not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and the sepulcher is with us unto this day. And therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of the Lord is according to the flesh, he hath raised up Christ to sit on his throne. He's saying this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up whereof we all are witnesses, and therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shared forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. That's the message that men and women, boys and girls, need to hear in 2022. They're hearing a whole lot of other religious stuff, but they need to hear about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Christ. They need to hear the gospel that's God's power under salvation. Men and women, boys and girls need to understand that we have always had the full gospel. You will ride along the streets of Cleveland and other suburbs and other cities throughout this country and you'll see on the sign such and such full gospel church. I stop by to remind all of the world that the church has always had the full gospel and nothing else but the full gospel. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, but which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The gospel is about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even as Jesus hung on the cross in Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 54, even as he was being crucified, the Bible says, Now when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. I stop by to remind all of us today that Jesus is the Son of God. He is not just a prophet. He is not just a good moral teacher. He is the Son of God. In fact, in Acts chapter 1, verse number 11, just as he ascended into heaven, the angel said to the disciples, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Jesus is not going to sneak back here. Jesus is not going to come back here secretly. But when he comes, the trump of God will sound that the dead in Christ shall rise first and they that remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and there shall 
shall we ever be with the Lord? When Jesus comes, we will know it is this Jesus. Acts 2 verse number 32 reminds us this Jesus. Have God raised up. You see, there was a whole lot of other Jesus in, in Jesus' day. And even before Jesus' day, Yahashua was the Hebrew name. It was also a derivative of Joshua. So he wanted to make sure that you understood what Jesus, he was talking about. He was talking about Jesus of Nazareth. He was talking about the one who walked among them for 33 years, three years of ministry, healing the sick, raising the dead, feeding the hungry, teaching. Teaching them the word of God. Matthew chapter 17 verse 5. Jesus was up on the Mount of Transfiguration. And Peter got all excited about what was going on. And he said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let us build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And the Bible says why he spoke that foolishness, God spoke from heaven and said, Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen, you ought to be hearing Jesus. You shouldn't be hearing Mohammed. You shouldn't be hearing Confucius. You need to hear Jesus. John chapter 4 verse 41 and 42 the Bible says and many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman talking about the woman in the well who had gone and told them there's a man that has told me everything I've done and they didn't believe her they went out to see for themselves and when they heard Jesus and they met Jesus they believed because of his word and said unto the woman now we believe not because of thy saying for we have heard for ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. You see, there are people in our world who are all caught up about whether his name was Jesus, which is English for Yahashua, or whether his name was Yeshua or Yahashua. They need to understand, I don't care what language it's in, it's all going to be the same thing, that he is the Christ, he is the anointed, he is the Messiah, he is the one who died on the cross for our sin, he is the one who was buried in a tomb, stayed there for three days, he is the one who got up from the dead and said, now I've got all power in heaven and in earth, go and teach all nations. There are folk who I want to call out his name, but they don't want to. Re uh, they don't want to obey him as Lord. He is the Christ. He is the Savior of the world. In Acts chapter thirteen, Acts chapter thirteen, verse number forty-four. I want you to turn there. I want to show you who this Jesus is. In Acts chapter 13, verse 44, the Bible says this. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. The whole city. Wouldn't it be nice if the whole city of Cleveland came together to hear the word of God? And, and I know there's some people who are not assembling with the saints because of, quote, the pandemic. But that doesn't stop them from going over there to Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse or whatever it's called now. That didn't stop all them folk I saw out there in those stadiums watching the AFC championship game and the NFC championship game. That's not stopping folk from spending thousands of dollars to go to a Super Bowl. Unmasked, unprotected, unknowing who they are with because those things have more of a priority for them than the saving of their souls. 
But the Bible says the whole city together went out to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentile, for so hath the Lord commanded us saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentile, that thou shouldest be for salvation under the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, there's that word again. When they heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. When they heard this, what are people hearing? But I said I was going to talk about this, that, that, and the other. Romans chapter 6, verse number 17. After Paul has written to the Christians at Rome and told them that they were baptized into Jesus, and that to whom you yield your servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of holiness unto righteousness, he says in verse 17 of Romans chapter 6, But God, God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Well, what was that form of doctrine? I've already told you 1 Corinthians 15 verse number 1 through verse number 4 talks about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So how can we obey that form of doctrine? The only way that we can obey that form of doctrine is in baptism. Romans chapter 6 verse 3 through 6 says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, there's that word again. That our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That form of doctrine is baptism, a burial in water for the remission of sins. It's not sprinkling, it's not pouring, it's not praying to get into Jesus. If you look at Colossians chapter 2, verse number 10. Paul says this, and you are complete in him, being Jesus, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him, in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Not sprinkling, not pouring, not so-called Holy Ghost baptism, but that form of doctrine, that teaching. The burial in water to arise to walk in the newness of life. But Brother McLean why is that so important when it comes to the scheme of redemption? In John 6, verse 27, Jesus said, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. 
We talk about it all the time when it comes to the Lord's Supper. We, we're going to partake of it shortly. And Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. It's all about that form of doctrine. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 4, Paul tells the Corinthians that the children of Israel in the Old Testament, when they were wandering in the wilderness, there was a rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. This, that, and the other. I've told you what this is. I have told you what that is. Now I'm telling you to leave the other alone. Brother McLean, what do you mean leave the other alone? Galatians chapter 1, verse, verse number 6. Watch the way Paul puts this. We live in a day and age when everybody wants to water down the gospel of Christ. They want to put everybody in heaven, no matter what you believe and no matter what you practice. They say it's just like going to Detroit. You can go along the Ohio Turnpike if you want to. Or you can turn off before you get to the turnpike and go along that other highway. I don't go there often, so I can't even remember what the number of it is. But see, when I die, I'm not going to Detroit. When I die, I don't want to go to Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> when I die, I want to go to heaven. And that's where you ought to want to go. And that's why you need all to leave all this other stuff alone. Paul put it this way. He said, I marvel. That means I'm amazed. I'm surprised. I can't believe it. That you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, when Paul says that you are removed unto another gospel, that word another means another of a different kind. And then when he says which is not another, that word means another of the same kind. So they have been removed from the grace of Christ unto another gospel of a a different kind which is not another of the same kind but there be some that trouble you and would pervert or change or corrupt the gospel of Christ but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be a curse as we said before so say I now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received let him be accursed the gospel is good news only when it's the gospel of Christ Not man-made gospel. Not man-made doctrine. There are a whole lot of gospels out there ne that need to be left alone. There's one group of religionists who say the Pope is the vicar 
of Christ. He's, he's the mediator. And I've got a problem with that because 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There are some folk who say baptism is not essential to salvation. It's only essential to obedience. I've got a problem with that because before Jesus ascended to heaven, he said in Mark 16, 15, and 16, Go ye therefore and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. It was Jesus who said in Matthew chapter 28, and beginning around verse 19, he says, All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach or make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the age or the end of the world. In other words, I will be with you if you go and you make disciples of all nations and if you baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 and 27 for you are all the children of God by faith. Where? In Christ Jesus. How did they get there? For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In other words, no one is in Christ who has not been baptized for the remission of their sins. Peter put it this way in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse number 24, 21 Wherefore baptism doth also now save us not the putting away of the filth of the flesh but the answer of a good conscience toward God. You can't have a good conscience toward God until after you've heard the gospel believe the gospel, repented of your sins, confess with the mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and then been buried in water for the remission of your sins. I've told you this story before in the great metropolis of Quitman, Georgia. I used to drive halfway between Quitman and Valdosta to the radio station to do a live radio program on Sunday morning. One Sunday I preached on 1 Peter chapter 3 verse number 21 when the Bible says that baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. In that same context, it says that eight souls were saved by water. Got in my car and began driving back toward the Laurel Street Church of Christ, listening to the radio station. And there was a preacher who came on after me, and he said, Now, there was a young preacher who just preached First Peter, and the Bible, he said that baptism does also now save us. And there were eight souls saved by water. But I want to tell you, they weren't saved by water. They were saved by the ark. I immediately turned my car around and went back up 84, went back to the radio station, walked in, knocked on the window and said how dare you say they were saved by the heart when God's word says they were saved by water there are those who say there's nothing in the name really the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. Did you catch that? There is no salvation in any other. What does he mean in any other? He means no other name. There is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. If you are relying on any name other than the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, if you are wearing any other denominational name and depending on that to save your soul the Bible says the Bible says neither is there salvation in any other Jesus is the one who said in Matthew 16 18 upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it I will die go down into the Hadean world but don't worry about it I'm gonna come back from the dead and I will build my church why because he is the head of the body the church Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22 and 23 he's also the savior of the body Ephesians 5 verse 23 what is the body the body is the church so if he's the savior of the body and the body is the church he's the savior of the church so if you want to be saved where do you need to be in the body and to be in the body is to be in the church so if you want to be saved you got to be in the church that he's the head of that he born with his own blood 
Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, there is no other foundation. I'm almost done. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Why, why is mankind building their hope on people? Politics. Material things. There's no other foundation that can be laid than Christ Jesus. In 1 Timothy 1 verse 3, Paul says, As I bethought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. I told you, leave the other alone. Some refused the teachings of the apostles, but Peter said in 2 Peter 3, verse 15 and 16, An account of the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Let me close with Ephesians chapter 3, and this lesson will be, be yours. Ephesians chapter 3, watch what Paul says to the Christians in the church at Ephesus. He's already told them that all things have been put under Christ's feet, and he's the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and in all. But then he says in Ephesians 3 and verse 1, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge and the mystery of Christ. Listen. Part of the problem in our world is people are reading everything else but what Paul wrote. They're reading everything else but what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote. They're reading everything else than what Peter wrote. Paul said that if you read what I wrote, you will understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Paul, what is that mystery? Verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his, his power. What is the mystery that Jew and Gentile would be members of the same body, the same church? No longer would there be the Old Testament law separating Jew and Gentile. Those ordinances that got in the way of a relationship with God for the Gentile have been blotted out. And now every single Jew, Gentile, male, female, child, man, woman, boy and girl has to come through the same place. They must come through Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but, but by me. So, we need to understand, we need to stand on this being the gospel and that form of doctrine, obedience to that gospel, and leave the other alone. If you're not a child of God today, you can be. I heard Brother Hicks pray about the pandemic. All of us are suffering under the pandemic. But as a child of God, I know the pandemic doesn't have the last word. God has the last word. I know our world is in chaos. I don't worry about it because God has the last word. 
I know that our country is divided politically, racially, and every other kind of way, but I'm not worried about it because if we preach about Jesus, he is the great uniter. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You've heard of the word of God today. Jesus said in John 8, 24, except you believe that I am key, you shall die in your sins. And where I am, you cannot come. Not only do you need to hear the gospel, you need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world. That belief ought to lead you to repent of your sins, change your mind, change your will, change your actions. Acts 17 and 30, when they were on Mars Hill, Paul said, as I passed by, I beheld your devotions and I saw an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Him that you ignorantly worship, declare I unto you. And he went on and told him about Yahweh, Elohim, the one God. And then he gets down to verse number 30 and he says, In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but he now commands all men everywhere to repent. What did they need to repent of? Ignorant worship. You need to change your mind, change your will, then change your actions. And then you need to confess with the mouth that Jesus Christ is God's Son. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And I've already shared with you the verses about baptism for the remission of sins. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter answered and said in verse 38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority of Christ. Why? For the remission of sin. And what's going to happen? You'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. How does he call? He calls by the gospel. We're getting ready to stand to sing the song of invitation for those who need to obey the gospel who are in this auditorium. For those who may be watching live on Facebook or watching later on Facebook or on YouTube or you might be on the teleconference call, you need to contact us versus, uh, by the numbers and the website and the email that you see in the comment section and we'll help you in your obedience to the gospel. You don't even have to live in Cleveland for us to help you obey the gospel. We will get you in touch with someone in your area that will help you in re humbly ob obeying the gospel of Christ. Do you need to be restored in your walk with the Lord? This is your opportunity right now as we together stand and sing. There's a fountain free, tears for you and me. Let us hate, oh, hate to its breathing. Tears of love. Tears of love. The love from the source above, the above and he bids us all freely dream will you come so will you come yes to the fountain free will you Come, come tears for you and me, me. thirsty soul, thirsty soul, and hear the word. Come, call, tears are foul, tears open oh, for all. Free, oh, will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. The welcome call. Tis a fountain. Tis a fountain. Oh. Open for all. Amen.
and certainly we're thankful to God Almighty for giving us another opportunity to come together to worship him in spirit and in truth. My prayer is that our eternal Father has been pleased with the message, the motive behind it, the content of it, the method of its delivery, that he has been glorified, that Jesus has been lifted up, that saints of God have been strengthened, built up in the most holy and precious faith, and that those who may be in the auditorium or on social media or the telephone who have not yet obeyed the gospel, that my prayer is the Holy Spirit will convict you from the word of your need to obey Jesus because he died for your sins. Uh, please uh, don't hesitate to contact us so we can help you do what thus saith the Lord. For all of you who are Christians, remember to do something that only a Christian would do. And whether you're a Christian or not, remember God loves you. Jesus died for you. I love you. And I am your servant for Jesus' sake. Church, say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. We want to thank Brother McLean for that fruitful sermon, the fruitful message, the, the gospel, this, that, and, 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 and the other, and none other, which we ought to avoid. We want to thank him once again. Even, even through um, Brother McLean labors with, with the illness of Sister McLean, and Brother McLean is spending a lot of hours and a lot of times at the hospital. We want to pray for him. We want to keep him in our prayers. And we want to continue to ask God to bless us as a family together. The results of the message, Sister Ruth Wade has asked prayer for my family, Brother Wade, William, her grandson, Benson, and Elijah. Prayer for myself and for my health. And we, we always thank you, Sister Wade, and we always keep the church. We want to keep the church family in prayer, particularly for, for health and, and other concerns. Let us, let us go to God in prayer. Wonderful Jesus, we come before you once again, Lord, after having received the fruits of the gospel, a message sent to us from heaven. And we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for its gift and its enlightenment, which always showers upon us. Bless Sister Wade in a special way, Lord. Yes, Bless Sister Lord. Wade, Brother Wade, the grandsons, Benson, even though Benson's sometimes working and, and he's here when he's here, we, we ask a special prayer for Elijah. And we ask a special prayer for all of our young people in the mm -hmm. university family, all of the ones who are, who are regularly here in worship service and those who, who are not here. We, we have your spirit within us, Lord, and we always pray for one another and pray together with one another. So, Lord, we ask a special prayer on our minister, Brother McLean, and Sister McLean, Sister Linda. We ask special prayers for all of those members of our family who are sick and, and, and laboring with illnesses, and those who are able to be here with us, bless us, Lord, and those who are not able to be here. We just always thank you for looking after, watching over, and protecting us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the Smith family, the visiting guests which yes. we have with us. Yes. We just thank you for sending them our way. And now, Lord, we, 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 we pray that they've received the gift of the gospel. And bless us, Lord, as we go through the remainder of our service. In Jesus' name, let us all say, Amen. 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 It's now time to commune with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I trust that you uh, have secured your communion packet. Uh, if you don't have one, the ushers will be, be happy to, 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 to get you one. Um, I knew it was the blood. I knew it was the blood. I knew it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost 
he died upon the cross and i know it was the blood for me Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Jelijah Tolar. I'll be coming to y'all with, I'll be coming to you with today's communion. As it reads in Mark 14, 22, it says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, shed for many. As assuredly I say, unto, say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Let us all pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us come here today to study more about your word. Um, bless the cup that represents your body and bless the uh, fruit of the vine, which represents your blood is given us. Please let us... Let this help us remember your sacrifice to us and help us remember that it was to help and remove us of sin. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I knew it was the blood for me. They nailed him to the cross. Oh, they nailed him to the cross. They nailed him to the cross for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I knew it was the blood for me. We have come to that portion of our service where we have an opportunity to give back to the Lord a portion of what he has given us. God's word tells us in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, starting with verse number six. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he prospers in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us go to God in prayer. To our Father who art in heaven, we thank you once again for the opportunity to give into your treasury that we may help those that are less fortunate than we are and that we can further your gospel. Father, we pray that those who do will do so cheerfully and that you will be pleased with our giving today. This is our prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, I would like to thank the Smith family. God has blessed us with your presence today. You are our honored guest. If you are ever this way again, please feel free to come again. Okay. 
we want to continue to pray for our, for our youth as they go through another trying year of school. Members of our children's worship class, they were ninth graders, now they're seniors in high school. They were freshmen in college, now they are completing their junior years. Brother Marcus Johnson will be attending the University of Cincinnati in the fall. So God has blessed all of our, all of our youth. If there are no messages, we'll now have our benediction. Brother Justin Shields will offer our benediction to us. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the high I will shout and sing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Oh, well, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior standing standing I am standing on the promises of God you may all be standing Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for waking us up today. Thank you for allowing us to come to this wonderful service to hear this good sermon. Please help us to take what we heard today, to take it out in the world, to help people get baptized and become Christians. Please pray for the people that have COVID-19, that they will heal, and that one day they will have a cure for this disease that we have going around. Please help us to have a safe ride home, and please help us to have a good week at our jobs. In Jesus' name, as we are, amen.